President Trump sat down for an interview with Mike Huckabee, and um, they had a moment of complete and utter delusion on the issue of Jerusalem. And um, they're on some, you know, uber Christian network, so I'm not surprised. The embassy was moved from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. I was there. It was as surreal a moment as I've ever witnessed. You made that promise. You kept that promise. What was it that just, just made you decide to do what no other president, even though they had promised it as well, what made you decide, I'm going to do this because I said I would? Well, the embassy was a big thing, but it was for many presidents before me, and everybody campaigned that they were going to move the embassy to Jerusalem, and nobody did it. And I never understood why. I really never did. I knew there would be pressure, but I never understood. But I do understand now, because two weeks before I did it, when the word was out that I was going to do it, I was called by so many countries saying, please don't do it. I mean, I was called, actually, I got to a point where I said, I'll call you back in a week, because I didn't want to have them tell me, don't do it, and then I do it, because I was going to do it. It was a campaign promise. I thought it was very important. And you know who really likes it the most are the evangelicals. I'll tell you what, I get more calls of thank you from evangelicals, and I see it in the audiences and everything else, than I do from Jewish people. And the, the Jewish people appreciate it, but the evangelicals appreciate more than the Jews, which is incredible. But it's not something. a surprise, though, Mr. President, because evangelicals are people of the book, and they believe that you kept a promise that was uh, uh, fulfilling, really, 3,000-year-old commitment to recognize Jerusalem as the capital. I think it's a nice thing to say, because it really, I mean, you know, it really affects Jewish people in theory more. Yeah. But as you say, people of the book, okay, yeah. people of the Bible. But the evangelicals really appreciate it, and that makes me feel good. But Nobody did it. I never understood why. As soon as that second week had up, and once I did it, uh, it was something very special. It's an important event. He said nobody moved the embassy before him, even though everybody promised to. Quote, I never understood why. You never understood why. You never understood why. Well, maybe it has something to do with the fact that it is the final nail in the coffin towards any kind of even theoretical peace process with the Palestinians and any kind of uh, possible potential two-state solution. The idea would be that under a two-state solution, you split up Jerusalem and um, that would be the capital of Palestine. But when you say, no, we're going to move our embassy there, and by the way, it is now the undivided capital of Israel. Hmm. What are you saying? What you're saying is, fuck your peace process, bitch. So the reason why other presidents said, I don't know about this, is because they at least wanted to keep up the facade of some sort of potential peace deal at some undisclosed future date. Whereas you're too stupid to understand what actually is going on, or at least too ignorant. And so you're like, I don't know, I moved the embassy. Everybody promised to do it, but nobody did it. I don't know why. I couldn't understand why. Well, maybe because that's a final nail in the coffin to the idea of the fucking peace process, and also it will lead to a violent backlash. So, and then when, by the way, when that violent backlash happens, oh, I can't wait for all the pearl clutching and, oh, who could have seen this coming? We permanently occupy Palestinians and keep stealing their land and keep building illegal settlements in the West Bank and keep doing apartheid. And then, wow, shocker, when they have absolutely no hope and uh, no even potential of some sort of peace deal in the future, turns out they get violent in response. Turns out that they're doing self-defense. I can't believe... Why would they do such a thing? I, all the pearl clutching is going to be so disingenuous and so gross. But he doesn't know. He doesn't know. He's like, I don't know. I, uh, people used to say, move it. I said, move it too. And then I don't understand why never, why they never did it. I did it. Because other uh, people were willing to listen to reason. When other countries called, they probably explained to them, like, okay, look, here's the deal. This ruins any kind of peace process whatsoever. It's a giant fuck you to the Palestinians. And then also, he doesn't seem to understand, like, why do evangelicals love this? I don't... Well, maybe they love it because it is a in their mind, a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. By the way, finish that thought process. What's the rest of that biblical prophecy? Oh, all of the land becomes Jerus uh, becomes Israel's. Fuck the Palestinians. Uh, so we don't care about all the humanitarian 
disasters happening against the Palestinian people, caring about them like they're human beings. Fuck that. Um, but God is going to return and then kill almost all the Jews, save some of them, and then it'll be end times. It'll be the apocalypse. It'll be the rapture. So that's what these people believe. And Mike Huckabee's like, yeah, they're people of the book. That's so he's admitting, like, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Biblical prophecy with, you know, God coming down and fucking killing everybody. And so they want to give all of the land to Israel and to the Jews so that the Jews can get slaughtered and their space daddy can come back. These are the people who are driving our policy. And then they have the nerve to turn around and go, you know, the problem and the reason why we never have peace in the Middle East is because these Palestinians are all fundamentalist Muslims. Mm-hmm. What about the fundamentalists on the other side? What about the evangelicals who actively, actively work against a peace process and human rights of Palestinians because they think it fulfills biblical prophecy? How about the extremist uh, Zionists and ultra-Orthodox Jews who are like, yeah, I have a biblical right to all this land or right from the Torah for all this land. It's just... The thing is, he's in bed with extremist fundamentalists, and he's too stupid to even realize it. And that is a terrifying prospect.